where you live in retirement may be the first time in your life that the location is not determined by where your work wants you to be, how far your commute is, where the school district is for the kids, how big your house needs to be for your growing family. You get to decide what kind of environment you want. So how do you do that? How do you choose where you want to live? Well, we're going to talk about that today on the Retirement Answer Man Show. I am your host, Roger Whitney, and if you're new here, this is the show dedicated to helping you not just survive retirement, we want you to rock retirement. And one way of rocking retirement is living in an environment and in a place that you're happy about, that you chose. So we're going to talk about how you do that on today's show during this series on relocation in retirement. But before we do any of that, we need to get to that all-important disclaimer. So before we get started here, let's make sure we get this clear. I can't give you advice. I don't know anything about you. It'd be silly for you to take advice from me. Think of this show as helpful hints of education. And before you make a decision, talk to your legal advisor, your financial advisor, your tax advisor, and in this case, maybe a realtor. Now let's go talk about some of the motivations that we see to even want to relocate when we retire. So statistically speaking, the studies that I've seen show that most people actually want to age in place, meaning they don't want to move. They want to keep the house that they have. In my practice working with clients, I see it split all over the board. But I do see a lot of people that want to relocate as part of their retirement. Not necessarily to another state, but maybe to a different house. So we're going to talk about some of the motivating factors around that. But before we do, let's step back here and think for a second. If you look at the top 10 stressors in life, Google it, you'll see a lot of studies that will show you the top 10 stressors in life. Retirement is consistently in the top 10, and so is moving. So when we're talking about relocating in retirement, especially near retirement, which is usually when I see it, we're talking about combining two of the largest stressors that we can have in our life all at the same time. And last week when I shared some comments from a client on their relocation, I think he talked about that a little bit and said, hey man, you got to really embrace this journey, this roller coaster, because if you go in it with the wrong attitude and you let it act upon your psyche, it can really stress you out and potentially hurt relationships. So combining these two things is a big thing all at once. So we got to be careful there. But what are some of the motivators that we see for somebody wanting to relocate as they retire? Here's what I've seen in my practice working with clients. One of the big motivators is when you're near retirement, statistically speaking, your home equity makes up a lot of your net worth. And that makes sense. Most likely you've lived in a home for a period of time. You've been paying the mortgage faithfully. And you've built up a lot of home equity just from working to pay off the mortgage. But you couple that with, hey, we've had a pretty good real estate market here the last eight to 10 years. So we've had appreciation in homes in addition to us paying down the mortgage. I think last year, 2017, home prices went up by about six and a half percent. Hey, that's not bad. And I've participated with clients on a lot of relocations and they're seeing that their houses are selling at a pretty good price and they're selling pretty quickly. So one motivating factor is you're sitting there in retirement and you're trying to figure out how you're going to make all these numbers work. And you look to your house and like, wow, I got three, 400,000 in equity in my home. That isn't doing anything for me while I own my home, other than it's a use asset. How could I convert that either to use that equity to pay cash for a house or use that equity to buy a house and then pocket the difference to make that money productive. That's a big motivator for a lot of people. Another big motivator in wanting to move is right-sizing the size of the house. So a lot of people, as they get close to retirement, they have a house that was built for a growing family. And this first really starts to 
become noticed when you become empty nesters and the kids go off to college, assuming you have kids. My wife and I are experiencing that now. We have two children and they're both moved out of the house, although my son is about to come home for a little bit after graduation of college. But we have a house that's, I don't know how big it is, 33, 3,400 square feet. That's a lot of room for two people. It served us well when our kids were growing up and they brought their friends over and we had the yard and we had the pool to create an environment that hopefully allowed them to have a social life that we could pay attention to, right? But now we're empty nesters and they'll be coming back periodically. So that's great. But this is too much house for the two of us. My wife would disagree with that, by the way. But this is a motivator. We right size in your house. When you get to retirement, it gets to even be more pointed, right? Because we are free from work. And so we don't want to be attached to a house. And what comes along with a big house? You got a lot of maintenance. You got to pay the yard guy. You got to pay the pool guy. If you have one, we do our own pool. You got to clean it. You got the utilities to heat it and cool it. There's always something breaking. You got stairs. You got, you know, just a lot of stuff goes into having a larger house. So one big motivation is right-sizing the house to that go-go phase so you can be free. Another thing that is a motivator that's related to all of these are taxes, right? If you have a house that is large and it's appreciated in value, most likely the tax rates have gone up and up and up based on the appraised value. We've definitely seen that here. And Texas is not really a state that sees a lot of home prices go up quickly. That tax bill gets expensive for a house that is more than you need, more that you want to take care of. So a big motivator is to right-size the house. And then the last motivator that I see is that emotional was, I can finally have the house the way I want it to be, the house that I want, with the things that I want in it. Oh, home shows are such a a fueler of this desire. (sighs) Dang you, home shows. Yeah, I heard a comment the other day, and we've made the comment ourselves, so it made me laugh. It's like, man, my kids are gone. I can finally change the carpet. I can finally buy the good carpet that I wanted or the good flooring that I wanted, <laughs> right? You can finally have it the way that you want it. These are some big motivators. So now let's go to our practical planning segment and talk about some things you consider when looking forward of where you might want to be. Some of this is going to be common sense, but it's good to review it so you can make a decision on what's right for you. All right, in choosing where you want to move, let's go through some considerations that you're going to want to make sure that you factor in. Okay, so today all I want to do is just list some considerations. A lot of these are going to be very common sense. And then next week, what I want to do is talk about how do you make a successful transition so you don't regret the big move that you just did. But today I just want to start to outline some things to make sure you're evaluating as you're looking at where you want to move. All right. And these are in no particular order. Number one, if this is going to be your quote unquote forever home, your retirement home, you're going to want to pay attention to does it have the attributes for you to be able to age in space or in place? You don't want to go to space yet, do you? In place. So what would some of those attributes be? Well, you may not want to buy a tri-level. You may not want to buy a house that has lots of stairs and turns and corners that has big stairs going up to the front door, to the garage, or to the back, because that's going to be a little bit more problematic as you get older, right? So that's something to consider if you're going to want to age in place here. You know, where are all the tripping hazards and things like that? Are the doorways wide enough to be able to get in and out if you had to use a walker or a wheelchair in the event that something happens? It may seem silly now, because you're young and you're going and blowing and about to hit the go-go years. But if this is the home that you want to consider to age in place, these type of things come into play. In fact, there are a whole checklists on home safety for homes to age in place. And I can share some links to those in Six Shots Saturday. I'm sure Nicole will be happy to make sure she reminds me so I can get her that checklist that I have. But that's an important consideration if this is going to be your forever home. One big consideration, which is really important now to many, but to some not that may be important is where's the family, right? Where are your kids and your grandbabies? That is going to be an important consideration for many in retirement. I got to be around my grandbabies. I hear that a lot. So that might be one of the big factors of 
where you decide to move. Now, all these, you can't control if your kids relocate. And that's one thing to think about. If your son or daughter or their spouse has a job that relocates often, you may want to be a little careful in relocating to where they are just to be near the grandbabies and then have them move again. But also, where are your parents or your brothers or, or your sisters? If you're thinking that you're going to be the one to really coordinate care for your parents, well, that might be a big consideration of where you relocate to, right? If you're in West Coast and they're in East Coast and you know you're going to be the one that's having to do all the coordination, there are a lot of remote services, but that's going to be a burden as you get older. And then on the flip side, and I had this happen with a client who didn't live near family at all, and then he had uh, quadruple bypass surgery, major heart surgery. And within a year, he had moved to be near his brothers and sisters and nieces and nephews. One, because, well, that really puts mortality right in front of you. He wanted to be near people he loved and that he cared about. He wanted to participate in their lives. And two, he felt alone having to go through all this and having some of them fly up to help deal with this unexpectedly. He wanted to be around people that he loved and he wanted to be able to get their support and lend his support where he could. That's a consideration that might not be front and center right now. Another consideration, and this makes total sense, is the cost of living. You know, what's the cost of living of where I'm going to move to? Because if we're thinking about maximizing and really rocking retirement, where you live and the cost to live there relative to an alternative could make a huge difference in what you could do. It could change how long you have to work how much investment risk you have to take, what you can afford to do in retirement in terms of enjoying and spending money on extra things. If you're able to move to a place that has a cost of living that's 10, 15% below where you live because you happen to be in a high cost of living area, that's real money. I mean, 10% of what? 10 grand a month, that's $1,000 a month extra to be able to go do things with. If you don't have to spend an extra thousand dollars a month, that might change the whole dynamics of your finances and life decisions. So cost of living can be a major determinant. The cost of housing can be a major determinant of where you live. A lot of us, you know, especially if we work in corporate America, we may have relocated to an urban environment where the big corporate campus and headquarters is. And sometimes that can be in a high cost of living state or area. And it served our purposes while we had the commute and everything else. But when you finally get to choose what you want, it can make a huge determinant in your taxes, in your cost of living, and unleashing some of the value of that house. So home prices from region to region, city to city, state to state can be drastically different. This is years ago, but I had a client who lived here in Texas. And upon retirement, they wanted to move just outside San Francisco. Whoa! bam, that changed the planning dynamic drastically. If they had been able to stay in Texas, they would have been, I'm trying to remember now, but they likely would have been able to retire a couple years earlier and have a higher standard of living. But it was that important to them to be in that San Francisco area that they were willing to make the trade-off. I mean, that's a drastic example but you can see how the cost of, you know, that goes into the housing cost, the cost of living, the taxes. You can see how multi-factor this can be. Another thing you really want to dive into is, okay, what is the social environment that we're looking at? Is this an urban environment, a suburban environment, a country environment? Because we all have different flavors of what we enjoy. Me personally, I can see myself living in a high rise in downtown Austin and never driving a car. My wife has no desire to do that at all. She wants more of the suburban or, yeah, the suburban where she can have a yard to go do what she wants to do in the yard and have some room. You're going to have to come to some reconciliation there of what you want. Is it going to be close to trail systems? If that's important to you, I would love trail systems. To rivers, to ocean, to theater, to event centers. Is it an activity-based community, like a golf community, a horse community? I've seen all. But you want to factor that in. What would set you up to do the things that you're most passionate about? Here's one we don't think about very often or we don't get intentional about is what services are going to be in the area that you move? Do they have good hospitals for people that are getting older? 
Do they have good services or specialists for people that are getting older? Do they have good assisted living facilities and care in home services in the area? Now, my aunt and uncle, they were very intentional about this, and that was a big decision in when they moved. I remember when they were evaluating the city they were moving to, they actually went and visited and toured assisted living facilities. And they are perfectly healthy. They look great. But they wanted to get an understanding of what the facilities were like in the area. Because what they were thinking is, and, and my uncle is a doctor, an oncologist, is if this is where we're going to age, Well, if one spouse needs to be in a facility like that, it's likely that the other spouse is going to want to be close to them. Well, well then, wouldn't that be a factor then? You want to make sure you're moving someplace where you already start to foster relationships and have an understanding of what's there. You know, churches, do they have a church that you're comfortable with if that's something that is important to the community? So you can think of these basic things. You know, you can get pretty intentional. Because if you don't, and that happens, and the only good place, say, for your spouse to go from an assisted living standpoint or to a specialist that they have to visit regularly is two hours away, well, that's really going to be a disruption. Did we talk about taxes? I'm not sure. Taxes are a huge one, right? So we don't just have income taxes, but we have sales taxes and real estate taxes. So on the real estate tax front, here in Texas, we have pretty high real estate taxes relative to other states. Like the same house in Tennessee would probably, from a real estate tax perspective, be less than half the taxes I pay now. Those are going to be a consideration. And factor that into, you know, you can get even more complicated and factor that into what do you have in tax deferred assets? I've done some planning where we were evaluating, okay, given our assets, given the kind of lifestyle that we want to live, Given that our assets are in these tax categories, what is the confidence level of living in, say, Minnesota versus Florida from a tax perspective? So we kept everything constant and we evaluated our confidence level of achieving a plan. And in this instance, I think it was Minnesota to Florida. It made a huge difference to the positive living in Florida when you're withdrawing assets and when you encompass everything in that we were in this plan that the confidence level was significantly higher by living in Florida than staying in Minnesota. And I'm sure that works for lots of different states, Texas, California, Texas, New Jersey, Tennessee, New Jersey, all those types of things. So the taxes and the tax environment that are going to impact what's going on in your life, and that could be sales taxes, it's going to be income taxes if you have a ton of tax-deferred assets, and obviously real estate taxes are a big one. Those can have a substantial impact on all of the rest of the planning and how much you're going to be able to rock retirement. So they need to be factored in there. So now what we're going to do next week is talk about how do you make a successful transition so you don't make a decision that you might regret. But until then, we'll do that next week. But for now, let's go get happy with Nicole. Hey, welcome to the Happy Lab, where we noodle on how to live a happier life. Nicole, you recently located a couple years ago. I relocated. What did I say? You said I located. You relocated. I do locate things all the time. Socks, shoes. Okay. Okay. You relocated from Austin up to the Fort Worth area. I did. And it is a stressful time, but this was job driven. So you're in that phase where outside forces dictate some of this relocation. But what was the happiest thing about relocating ever than meeting me? That was the happiest thing about relocating. (laughs) Working for you was destined. It was meant to be. Yeah, we definitely think Um, it was a God thing, for sure. Yes, it was, for sure. Happiest thing. The other happiest thing would be that my husband's sister actually lives not too far here. And so I get to see more of her and my niece. And when we lived in Austin, we didn't have any family locally. So that's nice too. Yeah, that's nice too. And relocation can be hard. And for you, it was a little bit thrust upon you guys. And it's good to ask. I have said this before. What does this make possible helps change the view to figure out how to make the, you know, look where the opportunities are rather than what's annoying you about something that you might have to do. All right, let's go set a smart sprint. On your marks, get set.
So here's what I'd like you to do in the next seven days to set the smart sprint to take a baby step to creating a better life. Maybe you don't want to relocate. Maybe you want to age in place in the house that you were able to raise your family or that that you've lived in for a year. That's awesome. But here's what I suggest you do in the next seven days. If you're on your own, if you're single, go to a coffee shop, go someplace outside of your normal environment and just journal a little bit or mind map or whatever floats your boat in rethinking your life and where you live if you had a clean slate, if you weren't trapped by what is. That's hard to do. What is sort of dictates all of our decisions if we don't hop out and think like, if I could do anything, where would I actually live? Because you may surprise yourself and it may end up being right where you're at, which is cool. If you are married, do the same thing, but together. And one exercise you can do there is both of you go to someplace new, both of you outline separately, if you could live anywhere, where would it be? What is it that's attractive to you? And then do that separately and then come back together and share just to see how matched up you really are. Maybe it's you want to stay in the same place, but it's good to get inside that other person's head because as you say, Nicole, nobody knows what's in someone else's head, right? We think they do, but they don't. Truth. Truth. All right. Sometimes that's a good thing though. (laughs) (laughs) So Roger, we're really doing this thing. Yes, we are. We're doing this. So we've gotten a lot of feedback on this rock retirement club. That's still what we're calling it for now. The RRC, which is going to be the vision for this is top-notch education on how to rock retirement with no sales pitch at the end. Getting just education, good education. And then community to be able to connect with other people that are ahead in the journey, behind in the journey, and in the same part of the journey that you are, quality people and having a safe place to share ideas. I want to emphasize safe place. So we're going to do the Rock Retirement Club. based on trolls. We're going to deal with that. So if you have an interest in this, the target date of launching this is going to be in January. We may do a beta test early. And we're going to have a limited time enrollment once it launches. So if you have an interest and just want to get on the waiting list, no obligation, you can go to rockretirementclub.com, learn more about it, and put your name on the list so you can get the information when this actually comes live. Are you nervous, Nicole? A little bit. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have so much fun and it's just going to be great. We appreciate you joining us today for this episode of Retirement Answer Man. Be sure to visit rogerwhitney.com slash answers to access the Retirement Answer Library with over 30 checklists to help you make the most of the only life you have. Remember, you have more power than you realize to create an amazing life starting today with Retirement Answer Man. The opinions voiced in this material are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. All performance reference is historical and no guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. Have a wonderful day.